Welcome back to Networks 2. As we indicated last time, we'll be starting a new topic today, circuit transients. And um, <clears throat> for me, I consider circuit transient to be one of those topics that will give a lot of aha moments, um, things that we have um, done for some time, but just not um, spending the time to focus on why we did some of the things. So we get into, into circuit transients today. Um, I have seen no comments in the two-port network discussion forum, and so I have to assume that most persons are comfortable with that topic, so we move on. So circuit transients, <clears throat> let's start with a definition. By the way, we have quite a bit to get through this afternoon. Um, so I'm going to go a little faster <clears throat> than I've been going since the summer started. So let's just start, get started with, with a definition. Um, when we're dealing with circuits, we have been, um, turning on, turning off switch, switches. And <clears throat> what we're saying here is that if you have a circuit uh, which is switched from one condition to another, and this can be us applying a source or simply changing uh, between branch elements or between elements within the circuit, there is that period that we really don't think too much about Yes, we don't think too much about it, but um, there's that transitional period between when the branch currents and the voltages um, move from the original values to new values. Yes, so I apply a source, turn on the, the, the light in your room, turn on the light in, in the kitchen. Before you flicking that switch, there was no light. You turn the switch on, you now apply the supply to the, to the light fixture. And we are saying that the period between you applying that source to when you see the, uh, the result, which is uh, being fully lit, that <clears throat> that period, there is there's some there's a time in which there is some transition between when the switch was off and when you have no seen um, the, 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 the final effect, which in this case would be light. Yes? And this period, this period, this intervening period that we're talking about is called the transient. A simple definition. So it's a period between which the branch currents and element voltages change from their former values to new values. The former value could be zero. The new value could be Well, whatever non-zero uh, value there is. Or the former value could be a non-zero value and the new value being zero. And thirdly, it can simply change from one non-zero value to another non-zero value, all right? Um, so as we said, that period is called your transient. And after this transient has passed, the circuit reaches what we call steady state. But key here is that, excuse me, key here is that the, the transient period is one that we may 
not necessarily pay a lot of attention to. Um, but it is there, and that is what we are going to be focusing on for the next couple of sessions. All right, so moving along. Now, if we are able to represent what occurs by using a, a differential equation, Right, if we're able to represent uh, what occurs when we make that switch by using a differential equation, um, <clears throat> then in solving it, yes, or should I say the differential mm -hmm. equation in of itself would have what we know as the complementary function and the particular solution. Right? So in solving that uh, differential equation, um, we have those two parts, complementary function and particular solution. The complementary function, the complementary function of the solution describes the transient, while the particular solution describes the steady state. So in a sense, students, what are we about today? We're going to get some, um, some circuits, and our first objective is to write differential equations which represent the operation of these circuits. And once we have developed the differential equations, we then um, look at the solution. One part of the solution will tell us what the transient is and what will tell us what the steady state is. And remember what we said earlier, that when we make the change, the period between which the values move from their former to new ones, that's known as the transient. When they get to that new value, right, after the transient has passed, at that new value, we call that the steady state. Now we have transitioned all of that into, for, for use of a better word, a mathematical domain, where we're saying, if we can describe the operation of the circuit by um, using differential equations, then um, <clears throat> solving that differential equation or these differential equations um, will result in a complementary function, a particular solution. And the complementary function of the solution describes the transient, while the particular solution describes the steady state. All right, so I want to uh, put that on the sticky side of our minds as it will um, help us to appreciate much of what will be discussed this afternoon. Any questions so far? No? All right. Oops, 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 oops. All right. So let's start by looking at an RC circuit. And as I said before, we may find that a lot of what we'll be looking at is some aha moments. We have seen this, these things before, whether in physics or electrical um, technology. We have seen them before. We're just going to have, we're just going to know, spend a little more time um, on their analysis. So here we have a circuit which shows a uh, capacitor with an initial charge Q0. And that Q0 corresponds to an initial voltage V0. So 
important, we want to note the um, charge, that's the original charge, um, and that um, is, the, is the initial voltage. So we know, we know that we have a capacitor charged up to Q0, and that Q0 um, represents a voltage V0. So here is my capacitor. It's charged to Q0, which corresponds to V0. And what we are doing here, we are closing that switch. And that switch is being closed at, well, it's closed at T equals zero. And what we are interested in is finding what happens immediately after it is closed. So that is what zero plus means. So I think it's important for me to just pause here and talk about uh, the three zeros that we'll be dealing with um, for transients. The first one is T equals zero minus, sorry, <laughs> accustomed to my minus one, zero minus. All right, so that is T equals zero minus. What that means is just before closing, all right? There's a lot more technicality to it, but that's what we're gonna be working with. And then we have T equals zero. So that is saying, at the point, so at the point of closing. So zero minus just before T equals zero at the point of closing. And then we have um, uh, T being equal to zero plus, which means immediately after closing, right? So just before zero minus, zero at the point of closing, zero plus immediately after closing. Okay. So what we, what we have here is that we are closing the switch. Right. We are closing the switch. It's closed at t equals zero. And what we are interested in is determining one, what the voltage is across the capacitor or an expression for the voltage across the capacitor after closing. And also we want to determine the current um, through the circuit once it has closed. Right. Now, practically, we know that if we close this switch, um, technically speaking, all we are gonna be doing is uh, allowing a path for current to flow. The only source that we would have in the circuit, the only source of energy that we would have in the circuit, it is the capacitor. And if the capacitor um, is the source of energy, then once we close that switch, ultimately the capacitor will discharge through the resistor, yes? And ultimately VC will be equal to zero. So that means that whatever happens happens between us closing this switch, right? Once the switch is closed, whatever happens between that time and when VC is equal to zero would be defined as a transient, all right? And so VC being equal to zero would represent our steady state, all right? So when it reaches zero, nothing else will, will happen. There'll be no further change to that steady state. Right? Okay, can I have you, please? Mm -hmm. Can I repeat what you said about the transient? Oh, okay, what we're saying here is that when I close the switch, once I close the switch, then the capacitor will start discharging, yeah? Okay. Now the fact that it is discharging means that the voltage across it will be changing, all right? So I close the switch, capacitor starts to discharge, voltage across it will therefore start changing. So between closing the switch, and I'm now going back to the definition that we had given earlier, between closing the switch and VC being equal to zero, 
So that time, that period between closing the switch and VC or, or the capacitor fully discharging, that would be our transient. Because as we defined it, it's the time between making the change in the circuit, yes? And the values move from their original value because before I close the switch, the current in the circuit was zero. Yes? When I close the switch, it is going to move from a particular value and it's going to fall to zero. So between that, I would have my transient. When VC reaches zero, so at VC equals zero, we now would have a steady state. Okay. The other thing we need to note is that before I close the switch, there's some amount of energy uh, contained within our capacitor, yes? Or within the electrostatic field. And that energy right, is given as half CV squared. So that would be like a potential energy, yeah? That's the energy stored in the capacitor, right? half CV squared, which is, and it is V naught, because prior to us discharging the capacitor, we said before that the initial voltage was V zero. So it means therefore that before I close the switch, the voltage is V zero, so the energy would we have C V zero squared, which is the same as um, Q zero squared over C, over two C, all right? All right, so we have set up the scenario. Now let's uh, <clears throat> do the math. And I'll give you the statements based on what I, I said earlier. So the first statement is that when the switch is closed, charge leaves the capacitor plates and the stored energy falls to zero um, via the conducting path through the resistor, right? So all that I said earlier, uh, that's basically, this is basically what it uh, summarizes to. Okay, so if that's the case, if we apply KVL for the circuit, that's that circuit, we have two um, elements there. If we apply the voltage law, then VC plus VR is equal to zero. Some of the voltages within a closed loop equal the sum of the EMFs, yes? We have no source, so um, they, 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 equal to zero. Um, of course, it's a homogeneous equation, differential equation, yes, meaning the right-hand side being zero, which means, therefore, that the particular solution would be zero. And if the particular solution is zero, then it means that the steady state would be where the final charge would fall to zero, right? Or in other words, that the capacitor would fully discharge through the resistor over time. Anyway, so let's come back to the math. So just substituting, so the voltage across the capacitor at any point, of course, we are using lowercase v and lowercase r, and we all know what that um, implies. So with the lowercase uh, vc and vr, we have lowercase q. 
So the voltage at any point in time across the capacitor would be given by the charge across the capacitor at any time divided by its capacitance. And of course, dq dt, um, which would be the rate of change of charge, is, uh, is a circuit current. That should be circuit. Huh? Okay, so that's the circuit current. Um, so DQ, using separation of variables, DQ over DT, well, no, we haven't done for that. Just rearranging, sorry. Dividing through by R. We divide through by R. I get DQ DT plus one over RC um, times Q, or Q over RC, okay? Um, and so we have here our first order differential equation. Yes, where of course Q is equal to CV. So I can uh, substitute for, for, for Q in my equation. Um, so I know we'll get an expression in V, which is what I'm really interested in. I want to know what the voltage across the capacitor um, is after closing the switch. So everybody has this? Uh, once again, sir. Yes, sir. Got it, sir. Okay, cool. All right. So making the substitution for Q, I therefore have C dV dt plus V over R equals zero. Or D V over dt plus V over CR is equal to zero. And uh, using separation of variables, then I have DV DT equal minus one over CR V. So obviously we can integrate at this point. We have DV, DV over V equal to one minus one over RC dt. Okay, and then we can integrate. All right, and integrating, we get L and V is equal to minus T over CR plus K. All right, now, this is where um, much of what you would have done in math would be a little different from what we have to do here in networks. And uh, for those who 
I know doing uh, networks too in order to move on to um, power systems next semester, um, you'll also have to do that. Meaning, in this instance, <clears throat> when we are given um, differential equations in math, one of the things that your math lecturer will provide you are the boundary conditions. So they will give you the boundary conditions. For networks, however, um, those boundary conditions, you will have to determine them by virtue of the operation of the circuit. All right, so we'll have to look to the circuit in order to find K, because the boundary conditions help us to find the, the, the constant uh, of integration. All right. So if we go back to the boundary conditions, we know that at t equals zero, we know the voltage that was across the, the, the capacitor, all right? So if we look at the, the initial conditions, at t equals zero, yes, the voltage across the capacitor was equal to V zero. So if we substitute T equals zero in our equation, right? So if we substitute T equals zero, what we have is that T equals zero, ln V at zero is equal to ln V zero, which is K, right? Because V is V zero, right? So substituting T equals zero, that will go to zero. And so we have your ln v0 is equal to k, all right? So if I, if I now substitute, let's bring in the k, all right? So I bring the k um, over to the left-hand side. And remember now, this is k. Yes, I get ln v minus ln v zero. Um, of course, we are subtracting these uh, natural logs. So it's ln v over v zero is equal to minus t over cr. Um, of course, ln is the log of to the base e. Yes. So it means, therefore, we can rewrite this expression yes, as vt being equal to V0 e to the minus T over CR. So as I said, this would be an equation with which you are quite familiar, right? um, known as Helmholtz equation, and it gives us the voltage across the capacitor um, when we are discharging it through a resistor. All right, everybody comfortable with this? All right, so if however, um, the initial time was some other value, right, and not start if we're in starting at zero but at some other value t zero the general expression would be equal to vt is equal to v zero e to the minus t minus t zero Over RC.
But if we go back to what we said that we were trying to find earlier, we wanted to we wanted an expression of the voltage across the capacitor, but we also wanted to know what the current in the circuit was. Yes. So we have the um, expression. This is general expression, but I'm just going to go back to this one. So that's the expression for the voltage across the capacitor. So this would be VC. Right. But we also wanted the current through the, the circuit. So the current through the circuit, we can uh, <clears throat> go back to the, the voltage equation. How we said that VR plus VC was equal to zero, which means that VR is equal to minus VC. So unlike our capacitor, the current through the circuit would always be equal to the voltage across the resistor at any point in time, divided by the resistance. It's one of the beauty of having um, the R. And that would be true for um, any, any electrical circuit that we are analyzing. If we know the voltage across a resistor, uh, we divide it by the resistance and we're good. So it means therefore that I, just making the substitution, since this is VR, we know that that is VR, it means that I is equal to minus V naught over R e to the minus T over CR. All right, this implies, therefore, that the current at t equals zero plus is opposite to the direction shown in the original figure. which means that the polarity would be positive on the upper terminal of the resistor. So in our original figure, we had shown that as, as negative. I hope we all drew that um, little circuit. Any questions at this point? One second. So, um, for what we just worked is when um, it's at the point of closing. Or mm -hmm. um, the current, right? That we just found, or the equation of current. Is it um, just before or at the point of closing? This will be at the point of closing, immediately after closing the switch. Your current will be given by this expression. Also, it's this expression that, that we're talking about the polarity will be reversed. No, the, 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 when we said the polarity would have been reversed is because we have this in terms of the direction. If you look at what, what we had before, if that, if that were true, then the current would be positive. Right, let me go back to the figure. Is 
This is the figure we have. So what we're saying is that the current, what this is showing us is that the current is actually going in this direction. So it means that the polarity and the resistor up at that point will be positive. Do you think? So in other words, VC would be equal to VR. Or in other words, VC minus VR equals zero. So this is at, uh, this is immediately after. Yeah, man. And the one that uh, when it's adding together, that's what? Um, no, no, that's what I'm saying. Hold on. The, the figure that we have here, as is, let us assume these were two sources. Let us assume these were two sources. Okay? Would they be in series aiding or a series opposition? Aiding. Huh? Aiding. Okay, so how would you how would you treat them? It would be VC plus VR. Yes, sir. Agreed? Oh, I think I see what you're saying. I think I see. Yeah. Right. So if based on what we just calculated. We're saying that the current is actually going in this direction. Okay. So it means, therefore, that VC is equal to Remember the networks one. The current entering, then this is plus. That's minus. No? I'm saying if you have a current entering a passive element, what's the polarity at the point it enters? Positive. All right. So we're not on the same track, man. So that's why I'm saying now here is that the current is actually going in the opposite direction. So in other words, in other words, um, when you close that switch, the capacitor, this is the key thing, when you close the switch, the capacitor, for use of a better word, becomes the source to the circuit. So it will cause a current to flow into the resistor. Yes, sir, I get it, sir. Huh? If I, what I had there was this. So I had the plus down here and the minus up here which means that the current is as you would, would be going in this direction. But we have shown that the current is actually coming in the opposite direction. So in essence, and this is important, it's important, and I don't want you to gloss over it and see you get to the fully understanding it. When we close the switch, the, 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 the element with energy in the circuit would know discharge that energy to the, to the circuit. So the capacitor would now start supplying the circuit with energy. And that is where, that it is between uh, the capacitor supplying and in other words, discharging itself that we are talking about the transient. That is the transient period. Right? That is the transient that we have just um, determined. All right. Um, we, we, we will have quite a bit more um, on this. All right. So let's look at the graph. 
So for the charge curve, we have the initial charge, and that would be at time zero minus. Yes. So before I I I, I um connected to the circuit or to the resistor, and it would then tend towards zero. If you go back to, <clears throat> let's go back to the voltage equation. Oh, come on. If you go back to the voltage equation, right? As T tends towards infinity, what does VC tend towards? Anybody? As T from this equation, as the time gets longer, as the time gets longer, what's happening to the voltage across the capacitor? Getting zero smaller, sir. Getting smaller. You, you, you were breaking up just now. Go ahead. Getting towards Get smaller. Sir. So as it tends towards infinity, VC tends towards zero. 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 Right? Which is what we said earlier, because if you remember the differential equation, the particular solution was zero. So the steady state, the steady state will be zero. All right. All right. So here at the point where we switch, um, Q is zero, but as time tends towards infinity, um, you draw your own properly. I just couldn't get a decent curve. But well, this is supposed to be asymptotic to the time axis. So it should be approaching, excuse me, it should be approaching the time axis. Of course, what I have here is almost classic. But anyway, it should be an asymptote. Finish your best. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, that's for the the charge for your um. We have voltage. We have VC. Initial voltage is V0. At T equals zero, so at the point of closing the switch, VC would be equal to VR. And they'll continue to be equal. VC will be equal to VR. Right? And of course, both of them um, would, would go to zero.
And then finally, final curve, one of the looking at would be for your current. Okay, for your current. And um, this current, this, this should be. Should be IR. So at the point you get, you connect the capacitor across the resistor, you would have the maximum current. And then of course, that falls to zero. Okay. Now, what I want to do is just to, um, you know, we have, to, we have to make sure that whatever we're doing actually makes sense. So if the capacitor, as we said before, had um, a certain amount of energy, then we expect that that energy or what what we are hoping to show is that that energy is completely utilized by the resistor because we continue to consider lumped parameter circuits. So therefore our connecting wires, as we, as we know, um, would have zero resistance and all the, yeah, you know the definitions for LPCs. So I don't need to go through that. Um, so if we have LPCs, then the energy that was stored by the capacitor must be dissipated in the resistor. Right? Now, the instantaneous power absorbed by the resistor. So we start with power. Right? The power is equal to V squared over R. Plus T tends towards infinity. As T tends towards infinity. And all we are doing here, this we have just substituted um, for V. All right? Because it's V squared over R, we know that uh, VR was equal to VC. We have already established that. Okay. So as T tends towards infinity, the energy that will be consumed by the resistor would be given by the integral from zero to infinity. So from where we started to infinity, yes, of the power with respect to time. So we'll do that in increments of time because uh, we know absolute that energy is equal to power times time. But we are looking at the time, at the energy, sorry, at different 
points in time. So it's from zero to infinity. Um, in, a, in a sense, we're finding the area under the, under the curve. Yeah? Um, that's PR T with respect to time. If we do that integral and make our substitutions, Okay, make the integral and make the substitutions. So we're just substituting here for um, P. We had already gotten the expression for P. Huh? And substituting from zero to infinity we get half CV zero squared, which as we had already established, um, this is equal to the energy or the initial energy that the capacitor had. So what we are saying is that all the energy that was contained in the capacitor has been discharged through or consumed by the resistor. All right, the other thing we need to con consider I think we need to consider everybody have this? Yes. Or RC time constant. All right, so we know that Vt is equal to V0 e to the minus T over CR. Um, and we know that V0 is the voltage at T equals zero. Okay. Um, and of course, now I'm putting in the, the current direction for the current. So based on this, <clears throat> I haven't given you any definitions. All I'm going to ask you to do is to just take the following graph.
Sorry, is everyone supposed to just take the graph? I should think so. Okay, we have this, these curves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so let's make a couple of statements about them. First statement. One, the smaller the RC product, the more rapidly the exponential function VT decreases. So the smaller the RC product, the more rapidly the function decreases. Second point I want to make, the voltage from RC, um, the case to a specific value in half the time that is required for 2K and a third for 3K. So all we're doing is describing what you just drew. All right. So let's And so let's go back to 
So we are saying that the smaller the RC product, the faster the decay. Right? So for RC equal K, whatever, that, whatever K is equal to, yes? now we are seeing a sharper decline. If we are to double the RC product, so we get 2K, then we are saying that it will take twice as long to get to that specific value as it did with um, RC being equal to K. And of course, three times as long. Right? The statement I gave it was a third and a half, same thing, right? So I'm just saying it in the reverse. And then the key thing that I want you to note, very important, is this one. If we're able to maintain the RC product, the voltage response will remain the same. Because we have V, um, well, whatever the, 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 uh, the coefficient is, but we are multiplying it by E to the minus T over CR. So if I, if I have a capacitor and a resistor value, and I multiply them and I get K, if I change the values of R and C, but when I multiply them, I still get K, then what we are saying is that the curve would look the same. All right? So we get the same response. The current response, however, would change. Because if I change the R value, then V over R will change. All right, so the voltage response will remain the same because we're dealing with VC times V0 e to the minus T over CR. All right? But because I'm changing the values of R and C, it means that the current response will change because I'm dealing with V over R and the R value has changed. So the current response will change, but the voltage response will remain the same if when I multiply the R and the C, yes, um, I get the same value. So in other words, if I have R1, C1, and that's equal to R2, C2, which is equal to K, So the products, two different resistors, two different capacitors. When I multiply them, I get the same K value. We're saying that this will remain the same. The voltage response will remain the same. However, the current response will change because in one instance, I am going to have V0 over R1. And in the other instance, I'm going to have V0 over R2. Right, because the resistances are different. Right, so those again, that's another thing I wanted to put on a sticky part here, man. So those coming back now to um, the, uh, the, the the definition for time constant, and if you if you if you if you know. All of these were coming back to this value. And we're showing that it was coming back to that, where that value occurred. Right? It wasn't by chance. We put it in there. We didn't say anything about it. So the time required for the response to decay by a factor of 1 over E is defined as the time constant of a circuit. So the time required
So by definition, All right, so we are using the, the, the uh, general expression. So Vt, we call V0, e to the minus t minus tau over Rc. Yes. V over E. So this is the factor. So that's where this comes in. Right. T equal RC. There's a there's a more classical definition for, for time constant. We can see that from, from this curve. So just draw the curve that, that represents what we have just um, defined here. I was saying the definition here, this would be tall. And from this, the definition that we have is that if the capacitor discharges at any point, sorry, at any point on the discharge curve, if the capacitor discharges at the same rate at that point, or fully discharges at the same rate at that point, the time taken to be fully discharged is known as the time constant. So in other words, all of that, all of those words, what it means is that if at this point, if I come to that point on the curve, for it to discharge at the same rate at, as that point, yes, it means therefore that from that point, I would have to have the tangent. So if I drew, uh, all right. So if I were to draw the tangent at that point, Yes, of course, looking less crooked. Then the time taken for it to discharge would be equal to the time constant. So this would also be equal to tau, which of course, so this would be equal to this. Right? And if I were to go all the way down here, on the curve, and again, draw a tangent at that point. So, and the reason we're drawing the tangent is because it is discharging at the same rate as at that point. So if I were to go and just draw the tangent at that point, okay, then between here, let me use a, a different color ink, between there and there, Would represent a time constant. Right? So this would also be equal to tau. Sir? Uh -huh. um, so, so, so for example, like where you had like the, the, the one, the two and the, the, the three in the previous diagram before, sir. Mm -hmm. um, you're saying for this curve, 
say between like say for between one and two the time constant will be constant like would be like the same thing between two and three so. go again go again well yeah you're, you're talking about the curve that, that's on the on the screen now right yes sir. okay you're saying the, 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 the became constant um the time constant sorry that is star is constant short. So you're saying if we draw the tangent to any one of the points, it's supposed to be the same, right? So I'm yeah. asking, like, where you had one, two, and three on the diagram. So between zero and one, if you draw the tangent there, it would be the same thing, like between one and two, straight Hold, on. Hold on. Remember, each of those, we had that. Um, RC was equal to 3K was equal to 2K was equal to K. So those yes. RC products are all different. Yes. What we're showing, what we're showing is that, uh, let, me, let me just go back there. All right, let's, okay, this definition, keep this in mind, all right? What is 1 over E? Let's plug that quickly in the calculator. What's 1 over E? Point 0.3, 6, 8, 7, something like that. Hmm? One minute. All right, well, I, just take it from me. It is 0 0.38368, three, eight, three, six, eight, all right? That is where, when you look at the charge curve, when you were talk, when you would have spoken about time constant, you would have gotten 63.2, remember? Time taken to reach 63.2%, okay? It's just really one minus this. But anyway, what we're, what we're, what you're asking about, are these discharge curves. So, what this is saying to us is that when I have the RC product, a value of K, yes, it will take this amount of time to reach one over E. If I were to double Work with me now. If I were to double the RC product, yes, then it will take twice as long. You see. Right. And if I were to triple it, it would take three times as long. So these were just, this was just telling me the time it would have taken to come down to one over E. I hadn't given you the definition of one over E as yet or with one over E. But here, it's some totally different we are looking at. What this is, what I'm giving you the alternate definition for the time constant. It is the time taken for the capacitor to fully discharge if it discharges at the same rate as at any point on the curve. So if this is my point, if I take that as my point, for it to discharge at the same rate as that point, yes, it means that I would have the tangent at that point. And what we are saying, if I were to draw this to scale, yeah, this time would be equal to this time. So that would be tall and that would be tall. And if I did that at any point on the curve and just drew the tangent, then these tall values would all be equal. So that's the, that's the other definition for your time constant. The time taken for the uh, capacitor to fully discharge, if it discharges at the same rate at any point on the discharge curve. 
And the same rate just means that you have a tangent at that point. All right. All right, so um, we have gotten into a lot of theory. So let's just quickly do some questions and make sure we understand what is happening, right? So take this question for me quickly. Okay. Any suggestions here? Or have a call on some volunteers. So Clark? Marcel Clark? Yes, yes, Chief. I'm here, sir. Yeah, man. With some suggestions. Our approaches. Um, still a grasp with us, sir. So, not quite sure. Yeah, but that's all like the other 26 persons in the class. <laughs> if, there is, if the capacity of voltage is to be halved, how we go about doing that? What do we do? Yes, Miss Ellis, that's all you have. Sir? Mm -hmm. Sir, you would say RC equals 10 microseconds. I mean, milliseconds, sorry. And, um, but why, but why, hold on, but why would, what, what would the 10 milliseconds really represent? What is it asking? Charge. Is it? Also? All right. Um, is it is that value, um, sir? I think tau would equal to 20 milliseconds, sir. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm guessing no, man. I don't know why you guess. Remember, you know, tau, uh, you know, I, I don't particularly like guessing. I want you to what is tau equal to one over e, sir. Tau. RC, sir. RC. RC. What are we asked to find? R. R. We, we, so we don't have R, so we don't know tau, right? Yes, sir. Hmm. So that's what we need to find. So what information do we have? Let's write down what we have, and then we, we, we determine how we need to get to where we want. Huh? Good. 
So what, yes. what, what, what information do we have? We have C. So C is one microfarad. What else do we have? Sir, sure, I think we have we have a, a rate, sir, because it says we want the voltage across the capacitor to be half every ten microseconds. Right. So if it is, if it is half, what does that mean? Voltage over V V over two. All right. So if the voltage, remember now. Give me the voltage equation. What's the voltage equation? What's VC equal to? Sir, V0. VO, C to the minus T over RC. All right. Is that okay. really much in, sir? So VC is equal to V0 E to the minus T over CR. All right. So, um, What would this VC be equal to? Listen carefully. What would it be equal to after 10 milliseconds? V out. We can't be V out. V out is the original voltage. Oh, sir, VC. VC over two, oh, sir. V no, hold on. Listen carefully to the question. What would VC be equal to? after 10 milliseconds. Look at the question. What does it say? VC over 2. It can't be VC over 2. VT over 2. What is VT? VO. So because... Oh, so because... it's VO over 2. Yes, sir. No, so? Yes, sir. So VO over 2 equals V0 E. Now, when does it become... V over two. Ten milliseconds. After ten milliseconds. Huh? After ten milliseconds. ten milliseconds. And what does that ten millisecond represent? T. T. Yes, so it is ti ten times ten to the minus three over C R. So simplify before we deal with the E part. Simplify what we have here now. So V0 over 2 equals V0 e to the minus 2, 10 to the uh, minus 3, 10 times 10 to the minus 3. Sir, so we are going to cancel the 2 V0 them, sir. You're asking me? Are you you all do much, you know? Yes, sir. Uh, Divide both sides by V0, get half equal e to the minus. So that implies that a half is equal to equal e to, to the minus 10, 10 to the minus 2. Three. Oh, so minus that? three, sir. Minus three. Two, two, two. It's ten times ten to the minus three. Oh, yeah. All right. And you know what C is equal to. So that's the equation that, that you need to simplify. You have C. C is one times ten to the minus six. Yes? It's one microfarad. So we can rewrite this, so a half is equal to E. If I substitute for C, I will get 10 to the 4 over R. Everybody with me? C is 10 to the minus 6. So we have 10 to the minus 2 over 10 to the minus 6. So that will be 10 to the 4. So I work, so this out now, work that out quickly. So I shouldn't be e to the minus 10 to, 10 to the 4? The minus 4. Minus 3, sorry. Huh? It's a millisecond. Sorry, it's yeah, a millisecond. Yeah, man, I took care of that already. This is 10 milliseconds. Agreed? Yes, sir. Sir, Which is the same as that. Well, I'm not the bit of You agree with that? Yes, sir. All right. And that divided by 10 to the minus 6 would give us that. Come, folks, we have quite a bit more to do, you know, and I just realized it's almost 6.30. 
Uh, these bright evenings are throwing off my rhythm. So what's R? Is that 20K? You work it out there, you get 20? No, I'm going to get 20K as well, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, I get 20K. 14.426K, sir. Yeah, 14, negative 14.4269. Positive, positive, positive. 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 Minus. It's 14.4. 14. 14.43 kilowatts. Yes, sir. Let me get to All right. Okay, folks. Yes, sir. All right. So that's just playing. That's much. We're just, we're just getting started. You know? So let's take question two. That's the second question. You could make right that, sir. So what are you are doing all along? I'm not calculated, sir. Oh, all right. Okay, go ahead. Okay, sir. Thank you. Question two. Quickly, quickly, quickly. We have quite a bit to get through. Yeah. 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 Okay. Do you have this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So here we have a series circuit. We have a 50K resistor, uh, 0 0.02 microfarad. We want to increase the current in the network by a factor of five without changing the capacitor voltage. What do we do? 
the equation for the current, sir. We are going to current. Before we start an equation, just think it through. What will change? What is it that we want to change? The current in the network. Sir. Current in the network. What is it that must remain the same? Capacitor. All right. So the voltage and the capacitor must remain the same. And what is it that will cause the capacitor voltage to remain the same? T equals zero, sir. That's so what you're talking about. Man. We want to, in, what we say, we want to increase voltage, the current. If we increase in the current, the resistance would have to decrease. Uh, before we voltage, get there. Resistance yeah. increase here. No, listen, listen carefully to what I'm saying. I'm saying, if the voltage is to remain the same, yes, the voltage is to remain the same, what If the capacitor voltage is to remain the same, what is it that must be the same in both cases at all times? VR and VC. If the, volt, if the capacitor voltage must remain the same, hmm? RC. what is it? The RC product. Thank you. So if the Voltage is the same, then R1, C1 must be equal to R2, C2. We said this earlier. Agreed? Yes, sir. So, um, if the voltages remain the same, right, then our, um, sorry, I'm a little distracted, I'm sorry. Uh, if, if, if that is the case, if we want the current, to increase by um, a factor of, what did we say? A factor of five for the voltage without changing the capacitor voltage. So what do we do? Calculate RC. Hmm? Calculate RC first. Oh, what is that? One so minute. So we have 50, 50K, sorry, 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 sorry. So we have 50K, 50 times 10 to the 3. We are multiplying that by 0 0.02 times 10 to the minus 6. What's that equal to? One millisecond. One milli? Uh, yeah, okay. That's one millisecond. Everybody comfortable with that? So if the current needs to increase by a factor of five, what will happen to the um, what will happen to the to the to the to the, the resistance? Decrease by a factor of five. All right, so it means that R would now be. Um, 10, 10, 10K. Right. Can I divide yes. by five? Yes, sir. Okay. And what would be our capacitance? One millisecond divided by 10K. Okay. So C would be equal to one milli over 10K. All right. And that gives us 100 nano, I believe, nanofarads. OK. Yes, sir. All right, folks. So that, that was just playing around with some of the theories. So let us get to, into some real, um, some real circuits. All right. Are we finished with it? So we're just testing the theory just now. Some of the basic theory. All right, so let's go to the next question. So take this question for me.
All right, do we have this? So let us. Okay, sir. Give me five seconds, boss. Should I count? Sure. <laughs> All right, sir. Okay, cool. All right, now, we have already established that when we um, close our opener switch, that there is that period between which currents and voltages change. Agreed? And we said that it will reach steady state. Now, based on the circuit that you have just drawn, circuit before us, when the switch was at position one, so the switch in position one, eh? so it is there. Forget about, eh? so that is, what is that? Eh? So that's your switch. It's in position one. Tell me what is happening to the circuit. Excuse me. What's happening to the circuit? Capacitor is being charged, sir. All right, sir. Capacitor is being charged. All right. Wonderful. Now, read down the bottom. Where it's at you. At steady state. The circuit is in steady state at T zero minus. It's important that we know that zero minus. What is the zero minus saying to us? Just before the switch is moved. Exactly. So just before the switch is moved from what? One, one to two. two. One. From one to two. <laughs> Excellent. So let's go back to it being at one. So we know, therefore, that the transient that we are dealing with is really what is going to happen after I open the circuit, or in other words, move the switch from one to two. Fair enough? But at the point yes, where I am charging the capacitor, I am told that the circuit reaches steady state. Now, what would that steady state look like? Tell me what would have occurred at steady state, given that, based on what you just told me, you are charging the capacitor. When would Cap we have gotten to steady state? When the capacitor is fully charged, sir. Excellent. Now, if the capacitor is fully charged, what else can you also say? If it's fully charged, what do you know about a fully charged capacitor? Zero, sir. Zero. What is worse? Yes, sir. What that mean? No, 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 that mean? Sir, and the capacitor is fully charged. There is no current flowing. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. So when it is fully charged, the, the current flowing through it is zero. So it means that at steady state, IC equals zero. So if the current flowing through the capacitor, no, before I, before I go any further, the fact that the capacitor current is zero at steady state, does it have any effect on the resistors? Would current be still flowing through the resistors? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. But with IC being equal to zero, what can you say about this branch? That the voltage Open circuit. Open circuit. Yeah. Huh? An open, open circuit. Acts as an open circuit. Yeah. It, it, ah. Ah, you guys make me feel good this evening. Ah. So with this closed, this would now represent or behave like an open circuit because the current yes, is equal to zero. Now, if that is an open circuit, what would be 
Because remember, all the discharge that we have done so far, I have only told you that the initial voltage is V0. Yes? In this instance, what we are doing is trying to determine what that initial voltage would be across the capacitor. Uh, the initial voltage would be the... No. Would, I, would I apply the current divider rule, sir? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And I know you're going to give me the answer, but I want us to understand the theory before we get to the answer. Do you think? So we can find what we are interested in is finding the initial voltage. Once I know the initial voltage, when I move the switch from one to two, what is going to happen? It's going to start to discharge the capacitor. So the capacitor the is going to start to discharge because it no longer has a current supply because I basically have short circuited the current supply. You with me? So the capacitor would now become the source to the circuit. And the initial, the voltage, sorry, not initial, the voltage across the capacitor would be V0 e to the minus t over. CR. Are you there? So that would be the voltage, and then it would be across these resistors. So that's what we are going to do. All right? That's our focus. All right. So, first thing. So, what I was telling me about current divider. Carry on with that. Who was it? Sir, V0, 40 volts. Uh, who was saying that we're using current divider? Who was saying that? It, it was I, sir. Forrester. Oh, Forrester. Okay. All right. So, with this being what was circuited? Okay. You're saying current divider. Go ahead. So, we'd use the current, uh, the current divider rule at the node between the, what? Resistor. Four and six becomes resistance in series. So that four, I'm saying resistance, resistor four and six becomes um in series, and they are uh -huh. part of the eight ohm resistor. Mm -hmm. So it would be current divider between the ten. The so that's eight three. times nine. Yeah, over, over eighteen. Over eighteen. Uh huh. So we get four. Yes, sir. Four, four amps. So therefore, V0 would be equal to and voltage, four. voltage across the 6 ohm, this which is equal to 24 volts. Yeah, the 4 amps. Everybody agree with that? Is there anyone in the room who does not understand what we just did? Remember, this is open circuited, so therefore the voltage across the 6 ohm would give us a voltage across the open circuit. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, so we have the voltage across the capacitor. So the, the initial voltage, or the, sorry, not the initial voltage, the capacitor voltage, VC, would be equal to 24, 24, E to the minus T. All right, now here's a tricky part. Well, not really tricky. But from the perspective of the capacitor, because remember now we have switched, we have moved the switch from one to two, yes? So the capacitor is now the source. So if that if the capacitor is the source, how are the resistors now connected? The four, four, four is in series and parallel with the six, sir. So it is now six in parallel with four in series with it. Huh? So that would be six in parallel with 12. All right, so it's a third of 12, so that's four ohms. Everybody, everybody good with that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Okay. So we have therefore minus T. So the equivalent resistance. So let me just write that in before I give it. So R E Q times C. So that would be 24 E to the minus T over 1 over 16 times 4. All right. And, I, and I'm parachuting up here. So that's 24 E to the minus 4 T. So that would be the voltage, the, the capacitor voltage. Everybody cool with that? Come forward, yes, talk sir. to me. If you know, see it talk quick. Whoa, who is that? I'm not hearing a word. Who, who, who is that? Yes, we said it. Go again. Alice. Sorry, you hear me? Yeah, um, we're hearing so you. So, for the, the reason when you're doing the current, when uh -huh. you're doing the, the, the divider on a. Huh? I saw it. Never mind. Okay. All right. So, this is the voltage across the. The capacitor, all right? I know it's discharged. Um, and as you said, the six is in parallel with the four and eight, which are in series. But what you are interested in is the voltage across the eight ohm. But as I said before, the capacitor now behaves like the source, all right? So if I have a source, if I had a source connected where the capacitor is connected, how would I find V? You find the current through the branch and it's voltage divider, sir. Then I don't need current if, I can, if I'm going to use voltage divider. We just use voltage divider. Yes, sir. That, that's what I mean. <laughs> okay. All right. So if we use voltage divider, what's V? What's V? So V would be 16, sir. All right, so V would be 16 E to the minus 4 T. And that's it. Sir, um, what you said a while ago when you take out the capacitor or if you choose the other source, what exactly is it? Me? Uh, so what do you find V? And someone said use voltage divider. So I said use voltage divider. So you are dividing this. Right? You're dividing this between these two. And when you do that, the voltage across the eight ohm, which is V, is 16 E to the minus 14. All right, we have eight minutes left. So in those eight minutes, um, you're going to take another question, which, I mean, you know, one of the struggles I have with this online thing is that I have to depend on you just to recognize the importance of doing the work. I, I'm not going to run you down and try test to see whether or not you're doing it. Um, so I'm going to just, I was contemplating marking it, I'm not going to do that. If I have to submit work, I have an engagement with me on Friday. So to reduce the amount of work you have, but it's important that you understand what we're doing. Take this question, all right? And that would be it for source free for RC circuits. We look on the RL circuits, all things being equal on Wednesday. So take this question, and while you take the question, please, 
I am not going to use what I have here, um, but I wish for you to uh, respond to your names. So I'm, I'll be calling the names and I will mark those who are present. All right, so please respond to your names. Um, while, I, while I'm doing this, I just remind you that tomorrow, you know, to, you all are, are aware that tomorrow is a census date, right? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be a cutoff for me. All right, so let's see. You know. But I know Adams is here. Barrett. Barrett. She's not here today, okay. Blackwood. Yes, sir. Brown, Beresford. Yes, sir. Uh, Busu. Present, sir. Campbell. Present, sir. Uh, Chen. Yes, sir. Clark. Marcelo. Yes, yes, sir. I'm here. Marcelo. Carsdale. Mm -hmm. Present, sir. Uh, Darby. Darby. Okay. Davis, Stefan. Yeah. Stefan. Well, uh, was that a belated response by Mr. Darby? Yes, sir. My laptop was stuck. It was it wouldn't unmute. Okay. David Stefan. Welcome back, Miss Donna. And it's Fern. Yes, sir. Where's uh, Grant? I'm here, sir. Uh, Gray. Yes, sir. Jeffrey. Yes, sir. Uh, Johnson. Antonio. Yeah. Yes, sir. Kenyatta. Yes, sir. Kamika. Kamika. Uh, Nicholas. Louis. Yes, sir. Lynch. Yes, sir. Uh, McFarland. Merritt. Yes, sir. Antiquio. Yes, sir. Uh, Morrison. Trevon. All right, so I need to adjust that one. Nevers. Parker. Oops. Porter, Ajay, Ramsey, Ramsey, Thomas, one eye. Here, sir. One eye. That's him. All right. Um, Here, Watson. sir. Nikolai Here, sir. Watson. Yes, sir. Here, sir. And well, I don't think Mr. Wilson is here. Uh, I've been quiet. All right, folks. So um, it is now 6.58. The, um, is it, yeah, go through this question. We'll, we'll spend maybe two minutes to go through it on Wednesday. And then we go to RL circuits and then we go into a forced response. All right. Have a good evening.